Okay, welcome back. Um, we are continuing part two of three of lecture one, Introduction to Chemistry. We're going to continue on with Aristotle and talk about his fundamental observations. He said that the heart is the center of thought. Um, we still say that today with we memorize things by heart. He said a brain is a radiator to cool the blood. Um, he said someone is hot headed is an example, a modern example of what we say. A continuous force such as a prime mover must be exerted to keep things in motion. So before Newton, he was really understanding um, that things didn't just go on forever. He said that a thrown object continues to move because of the air from in front moves behind and pushes the object. This we know is not true. However, flight is similar in that it pushes up. A th um, earthquakes, he said, were caused by winds blowing inside the earth. Objects fall at accelerations proportional to the weights, and that wasn't disproven until Galileo. He said air is levity because it rises. The moon shines by its own light. We know now that it's reflected from the sun. That nature abhors a vacuum. I even still say that today, even though it's not actually true. Spontaneous generation of life. Um, in other words, dead meat changes into living flies. Um, and other examples of that. He said, you know, he developed that concept, but this was still being tested into the 1800s until Louis Pasteur finally disproved it. And he said that it is the nature of things to be the way they are. So it's in the nature of the sun to be hot, for example. And that animals on earth will be the same species at a given latitude. Now, this was before people started traveling around the world, and so he had no reason to not believe that. And even today, Aristotle is frequently quoted. So 2,000 years later, Galileo um, gets persuaded to discontinue questioning the wisdom of Aristotle by the Catholic Inquisition. In other words, they put him uh, possibly under torture. Nobody has proven that one. But they did bring him up in front of the Catholic Church, who was the ruling power in Europe at the time. And basically, you buck the Catholic Church and you die. And so he actually ended up being under house arrest for many, many years before they finally um, released him. So you can see an example of inquisitorial techniques. And now we're on to Roger Bacon. Roger Bacon was known as the crazy monk of Oxford University in the 1200s. He stated that experimentation in science is necessary, so he was the beginning of the thought of the scientific method. He developed a formula for gunpowder, but hid it to avoid prosecution under the Inquisition. Again, the Catholic Church went after you. He predicted the development of horseless carriages, sailless ships, flying machines, and machines for lifting great weights. So he was way ahead of his time. The beginnings of chemistry... Um, proper, the scientific investigation part of it, started with alchemy, and it existed from the ancient times until the 1600s, and was the forerunner to chemistry. One of the most modern thinkers of all time, Isaac Newton, was a huge alchemy fan, for example. It was mystical in that it searched for perfection. Alchemists wanted to make precious metals cheaply, so they wanted to make gold out of base metals, or produce formula for making gold and silver, or to make elixirs or cure-alls, love potions, and poisons. An alchemist produced the potion that made Romeo's Juliet appear dead for three days, for example. They sought the Philosopher's Stone for power and great longevity, and that reared its head again in the Harry Potter series. They, they sought the universal solvent, which would dissolve everything, and they worked with sorcery. However, alchemy also had a practical side. They developed glassware and techniques that we still use today. They discovered many new substances, elements, and compounds, and developed test tubes, distilleries, and reaction furnaces. Alchemy was viewed as witchcraft. Not all alchemists were bad, but their general reputation was extremely sinister. It was not safe to be an alchemist, as he might be burned for sorcery or hanged for the general good of the public. But it was not imagined as this, although I particularly like this series. For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge anime geek. Anyway, on to Robert Boyle. 
Robert Boyle defined the element with its modern definition as a form of matter that cannot be further simplified. He shot down the four elements hypothesis, so bye-bye Empedocles, by showing that there are many elements. We now, that there are no, we now know that there are 92 found in nature. He changed the science of alchemy to a more accepted one of chemistry. And then we go to Sir Francis Bacon. He wrote uh, a book called The Novum Organum, which presents the formalized scientific method. So here's, here's where we start with it. And he said that you must collect reliable data, classify the data, generalize an experiment, make a hypothesis or theory, and try to prove it by further experiments. And so he really is the father of the scientific method. John Dalton state, stated that the elements are composed of atoms and that atoms are indestructible, which is chemically but not physically correct. We can split the atom, but not until the 1930s-ish. He also stated that all atoms of a particular element are identical, which is true. And Dalton's law states that atoms combine to form molecules in an orderly fashion and that atoms are not changed in the process of forming molecules, which is also true. Antoine Lavoisier um, discovered the true nature of burning. He said it was not the liberation of a mysterious negative weight substance called caloric, which is where we get the term calories now, but the chemical addition of oxygen to the fuel. He burned a diamond in oxygen and obtained only carbon dioxide as a product, thus proving that burning is rapid oxidation and that diamond is pure carbon. He introduced quantitative measurements into chemical experimentation and for accurate consistent results he helped to invent the super simple metric system. At an early age Lavoisier was guillotined during the French Revolution because he was a nobleman and a tax collector for King Louis XIV. He was also a um, huge favorite of Marie Antoinette in her salon. His short chemical career had already gained him greatness in the scientific world though and it continues today. Our final guy that we're really going to look at is Dmitry Men Mendeleev. He invented the first periodic table for classifying elements. He found that elements could be classified by their reoccurring chemical properties, and he used his periodic table to predict the existence of undiscovered elements and to determine their properties. As a result, many new elements were quickly found. And that's the periodic table that we use today. Finally, the scientific method. Um, we're going to review this because you should have had this many, many, many times in the past. The scientific method is a way of solving problems or answering questions. It starts with observation, noting and recording of facts. A hypothesis is developed, which is a possible explanation, not a guess, as to the cause of the observation, and it is based on research and previous knowledge. The key is that a hypothesis must be testable and you have to write that down, underline it. It has to be testable. The experiment is designed to test the hypothesis and only two possible answers can be gained from the experiment. Either the hypothesis is supported or the hypothesis is not supported. Variables are the focus of a controlled experiment. In a controlled experiment, only one thing changes at a time in the laboratory. The manipulated or independent variable is what you change or control directly. The responding or dependent variable is what changes as a result. There is no direct control over this variable. Data is generated, and these are the observations that are collected during the experiment, and often then the hypothesis is modified based on the conclusions drawn from the data. Okay, um, apparently I lied and said that this was going to be a three-part lecture, but this is actually only a two-part lecture. So um, with that, we're going to close this lecture. We will continue on uh, next time, starting off with measurements, energy, and all sorts of other fun stuff. So I hope you have a great day. Go ahead and try the quiz now and uh, enjoy.